And I know that uh, our spiritual life never have any vacations. Well, right? I just want to, you know, just just want to tell you that uh, Amy and Gemma is uh, in Hope Madrid as well, ministering to our sisters there. And uh, before we start, okay, maybe it's good to pray for them there as well. Because uh, it's their first time to go there. I used to, I'm usually the one who, who go there, but right now it's their first time to go there to minister to our brothers and sisters there in Hope Madrid. So this is something that we, we're going to do before we are going to share the, the, you know, the, the topic that I have right now. Uh, I know that uh, last, last week we have so, you know, we, we, we have a very blessed uh, preaching by our pastor Simon N. Who are those who are blessed last week? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. So we all we all have this spirit of oxen. Amen. And uh, to become an, you know having this uh, spirit of oxen, we can we are very strong. Okay. At the same time, we have this uh, long stamina. Oxen actually they just go from morning until evening without without any complaints to the owner. And this is something that we have in Christ that we have this spirit of oxen as well. That we can move forward, move forward to every challenges, and we're gonna overcome it. Amen, church. And this is the promise of God because the Holy Spirit is with us. He is the oxen in our life. Amen. And I'm really, really so blessed that it really is. There's something in my heart that really is here, you know, to really, you know, to really go and move forward, you know, to push this, you know, battle that we have. We all know that yes, our God is amazing, it's powerful, but we know in fact that we have also enemies, and that is the devil. That's why we together as a church must, you know, must move forward so that we can fight the battle, the good fight of faith. Amen, church? So right now, I'm going to discuss also about our series. You know, our series is called To Follow Jesus. Okay, this is our series. Actually, this is the second Sunday of our series. So, I would like to give you some summary of the series that we have two weeks ago. Okay? And this is about following Jesus Christ and the points that we have is, you know, that there always change in life when we follow Jesus Christ. Do you agree with me? There is always change. Always change. And when we follow Christ, Jesus Christ said in the Bible, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So it means that following Jesus Christ, we become fishers of men. Hallelujah. So this is our calling. You know, being a pastor, being a worship leader, being, you know, being an evangelist, being prophet, these are our roles, but this is not our calling. To summarize our calling, our calling is to follow Jesus. But along the way, God is telling us what to do. There is no permanent role because, you know, God may tell us what to do next. But our calling, permanent calling, is to follow Jesus Christ. Right? Can you say the person beside you? Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. <laughs> okay. So, now we'll continue our topic. And, and the title of my sermon today is this. Follow Jesus Christ. It's not about me. Okay? I, I know it's invisible, but it's there. You will see it. <clears throat> follow Call to follow Jesus, it's not about me. Okay? Can we all stand and read these verses in Philippians uh, 1, 18 to 24? I know it's not there, but I will read it for you. Later it will show up. Okay? Verse 18, it says, What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Yes! I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be all ashamed, but that which, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh that makes fruitful labor to me, yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better, but to remain in, in the flesh.
flesh is more necessary on your account. Can we bow down our heads and pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Lord, right now, convict us, every heart that you see right now, to follow Jesus. Teach us to follow Him. Teach us to be near with Him. Lord, anything that I have prepared right now, overriding Father God, I want you to speak through me. I am willing to be used by you, by you Father God. Lord, I believe that you love your people more than I love them. Minister to them. Heal every sicknesses that they have right now. Heal every emotional illness, Father God. This is what I pray, Father God. Because you love them more than I love them, Father God. And also, Lord, as we are doing this service here in Mogison, we want to pray for our sisters there and brothers in Hope Madrid that we together, Lord God, proclaim who Jesus Christ in our life. I know as the Holy Spirit is here, you are also there. Change every heart. Every heart, Lord God. Thank you once again, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. You may now be seated. So this is our, uh, you know, this is a verse that we are going to study and it's about following Jesus Christ. You know, why, why, why I want to, to share this verse to you? Because Philippians is a letter from Paul. And when, when, you, when, you, seek, when you speak about Paul, he's the great example who followed Jesus Christ. He's the greatest example in the New Testament who followed Jesus Christ. I know many people there follow Jesus Christ. But Paul, you know, Paul really, you know, put his heart to all his plant churches, you know, the churches that he planted, about how he followed Jesus Christ. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, this is what he said, okay? Follow my example, just I follow the example of Christ. So if you want to follow Jesus Christ, follow my example. This is how confident Paul is telling his people, if you want to follow Jesus Christ, follow my examples as well. And this is what I'm challenging you as well. Okay, this is what I'm challenging you. That later on in your life, you can speak to your people, to your family. If you want to follow Jesus Christ, follow my examples as well. Even me. Before, you know, sometimes I have no confidence telling, you know, telling the members of the church, follow me because I follow Jesus Christ. But now I can say, follow me because I follow Jesus Christ. I know it's hard because it looks, you know, it looks very proud, but we can see it's biblical. Paul, Paul speak it, spoke it to his church. And we, as we are growing in our spiritual life, then we must say also later on that you follow me because I follow Jesus Christ. I'm in church. Can we do that, right? Amen. Because this is the desire of Jesus Christ for us to grow. So I want you to examine the heart of Paul in this context, okay? Because in this verse, he's really pouring his heart about desiring to be with Jesus Christ. He likes to go in heaven, okay? It means that he likes to die already at those times to be with Jesus Christ. That says here, that's far better. Amen? That's far better than staying here on earth. But he also mentioned that, but I want to stay here for your sake, for your own account. This is what Paul said. I want to stay here for your own account. But he decided to be with Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes for us, we don't want to die. Because probably we think that our life here on earth is better than in heaven. In fact, heaven is way, way better than in Norway. <laughs> okay? Way better than in Norway. Okay? Norwegian people there in heaven, they are always smiling. Oh, I'm sorry, Norwegian. Okay. <laughs> you always do also, right? <laughs> and all people there are smiling, praising God as well. Amen, Amen church? Amen. But we know for sure that you know, the desire of Paul is to be with, you know, with his people so that they will be blessed. They will, you know, he can present God as holy and without blemish. So, the point that I'm going to give you, I want you to put in your heart as well, because this is something that is very important so that we can grow spiritually, okay? I'm going to show you the first point, okay? Point number one is this. It's not about me, okay? Can you say the person beside me? Beside you? 
it's not about me. Okay? Or maybe it's better to say, it's not about you. It's not about you, okay? <laughs> okay, it's normal to live for ourselves. It is very normal, especially here in, on earth, it's very normal to plan for yourself. You plan for your future, you plan for everything else. Even right now, some of you are planning for vacation this June, July, and August, right? Including me. Including me. But for Paul, as he followed Jesus Christ, the plan of his life was different. Okay? The plan for his life is different. This is his plan in, in verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. I mean, church, it's very, very different. That's why following Jesus Christ is not about me. You know, we always think about what we always think about our rights, about our entitlement, ab about everything that could, you know, that, that we could receive in our life, our reputation. Sometimes we, we cannot do the, you know, the work of the kingdom of God because we are protecting our reputation. We are protecting that, okay, maybe if I'm going to do this, it's very embarrassing for my family, right? Sometimes we have this kind of attitude in our, in our life and we have this mentality that is only me, 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 and me. And for, for, for us, it's sometimes, you know, it's, we cannot move forward because of this kind of attitude. We all, sometimes we also have to think that you now when we receive from problems or challenges in life, sometimes we question God. And this is our question most of the time. Lord, why me? Okay? And then, and, and then God answers you back, why not you? <laughs> why not you? You know, it is because we think of our soul, ourselves too much. We think of what we can get and what we can receive from God and from other people. I'm giving you, you know, when, when I see it's not all about me. I realized when I was in on airplane, probably all of us probably, you know, traveled by plane already. And when you look down from the window, okay, when you look down from the window, you see very, very small things, okay? When you are probably a thousand feet high, you will see very, very small people. When, when I imagine myself, wow, it's really not about me. If I see, you know, if people saw me from, from, from that, you know, from that high, they could not, they will not notice me. They cannot see, oh, that's Pastor Steve. Okay? Oh, that's, that's Gwen. All right? Oh, that's Sister Roxanne. Oh, he, she's even smaller there. <laughs> okay? Maybe we, we didn't notice it. And you don't see any anything that has been, you know, that has been described you on earth. And when I was on, on sky, I really could imagine that, wow, it's really not about me. It's about who created this world, this universe. And that is our God. It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ who died for me. You know, in Philippians 1, 20 to 21, it says, As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be all ashamed, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body. You see, oh, who is the verse like that? In, in 21, it says, In Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. Imagine the heart of Paul that he always want to honor Jesus Christ by life and by death. I mean, church, by life means when you are always happy, you honor God. By death means probably when you are having so much problem in your life, do you still honor God in your problems? Do we still honor God in every challenges that in, in, in our challenges in life? By life and by death, even we know Paul that has been beaten many times by the enemies, you know, by those who persecuted him. But he continued to honor God in his body. And that's why he said, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So the life of Paul is all about proclaiming the life of Jesus Christ. Lifting Jesus Christ above everything else. That's why even John the Baptist mentioned in John 3.30, it says here, He must increase, but I must decrease. For us believers, for us followers of Christ, we must decrease ourselves. 
but we must increase Jesus Christ in our life. This is about proclaiming Jesus Christ. It's not about me increasing, but it's about Jesus Christ increasing. Every name, above all names, He must be worshipped. I'm in church, and that we must proclaim Jesus Christ. And if we increase Jesus Christ in our life, there is always blessing, there is always result in our life. We talk, no, we, when we talk to other people, we get this desire to share Jesus Christ as well. Having this desire, because we receive the gift of salvation, that when we meet other people, we must also have the desire for them to experience Jesus Christ in their life as well, proclaiming. We must be, we, we must not be a Christian Lone Ranger. We must be a Christian who is always active in sharing the Word of God. Amen. Proclaiming the Word of God. Inviting. If you if you if you are you know if you are not familiar on how to share the gospel, at least show your life to them that you are being changed by God. Do you have testimony to share? I believe every one of us has testimony to share. And we must share it. And I believe many will be blessed because of your testimony. Many will be blessed with you because of your testimony. Don't hide your testimony. Your testimony has been given to you because He wants you to glorify God by your life. Amen, church? That's why it's not about me. Can you say it again? It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ. And it's not about me, it is about his wife. Do you know that Jesus Christ has wife? And the wife of Jesus Christ is the church. Okay? In Philippians 1, 23, 24, it says, I am pressed hard between the two. This is Paul saying, I want to go, I want to go in heaven, but I'm also pressed hard to stay here. My desire is to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. He, you know, Paul was, you know, was thinking about the people. He was thinking about Christians, about the church, about the wife of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because this is very important to God as well. More necessarily on your account. It means every one of us, not only for one person. But for every believers on earth. And this is something that you could see the heart of Paul. He liked to have a vacation in heaven <laughs> to go home with Christ, but he wants to stay here on earth to teach the people, to care for the people. For faith is very strong. He could say that, yes, I can go now to heaven because everything I have accomplished. Now I can rest. He can say that, right? But he's always have decided to stay for the purpose of sharing the gospel to other people and to care for the people of Christ, for the church of Christ. He can retire. For us Christians, our only retirement is when we go to heaven. Right? We are always working for Christ. Even when we are 67 years old, 62 years old, we never retire in our faith in Christ. We will continue to praise God, to worship God, and will glorify God. Here on earth, when you retire 67, you can only re enjoy your retirement for how many years? 12 years? 13 years? When you become 80 years old, probably you will die. But when we, as Christians, continue to work until our retirement, it means when we die, our retirement period is everlasting. Amen? Amen? You know the boat that you see there? The ship that we are going to, you know, to ride is even bigger. The driver is Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen, church? Because I know for sure that it's heaven. It's something for us. He has made for us believers so that we can enjoy life. Jesus Christ promised so that we have life. And this is life that God has promised to us. So, church, our life is to what? To share the gospel with other people and to be with the church of Christ. And this is not a one-man journey. This is not a one-man journey. Yes, God has blessed us so much. He, you know, He can speak to us individually, but He's looking in the bigger picture. He's looking to the entire church. 
that he saved on the cross. Yes, he can bless you individually, but he is concerned more for the whole church that he saved. I mean, church. That's why following Jesus Christ is not one man journey, but it's a journey of all of us believers. Can you say to the person beside you, it's our journey. <laughs> Amen, brother. This is our journey. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. In Matthew 4, verse 25, it says, And great crowds followed him, Jesus Christ, from Galilee and Decapolis and from Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond Jordan. I mean, church, that's why it's very good to be international church, right? When we are here in church, wow, we are worshiping God. We are following Jesus Christ from Africa, from Philippines, from Norway, from Brazil, from Romania, wow, just to praise God. And these are crowds, imagine. This has been mentioned in Matthew 4. The crowds followed him from different places, from Okra, from Olesburg, from Storr, from Hobison. Everyone is meeting together just to follow Jesus Christ. And you are included, right, church? We are following Jesus Christ. And this group of followers we call the church, the wife of Jesus Christ. And when we bless the wife of Jesus Christ, we are also blessed because we are part of the wife of Jesus Christ. When you bless the wife, we are also being blessed by God. I want to show you in Ephesians 5, 5 okay, about we as a church, okay? It says here, wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as okay, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, we as a church, so also wives should submit to in everything to their husband. And again, husband, love your wives. Okay? I'm not I'm not telling you that husband must look for more than one wife, okay? Husbands are plural here, okay? That's why they use wives here, okay? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed by her, her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the, present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. It's about his church. Following Jesus Christ is about his wife, about his church. Not the individual, but the whole church. We are blessed, but he wants to bless us so that we can bless the church. We can bless the wife of Jesus Christ. Why? So that we could bring the church, we can present the church in splendor, without wrinkles, without spot or any kind. So that we can present the church, we together, okay, we work together to present the church, a healthier church for Christ. So that we together as a church, we can present the wife of Jesus Christ, holy and without blemish. Do you, do you want to be part of that? We are followers of Christ. We are part of making the church holy before Jesus Christ. We are the followers of Christ. That is our calling to follow Jesus Christ and to be part of making the church holy before God. Amen, church? You know, praise God, we are having a vacation in two weeks. Amen? We're going to USA. Amen! Amen! Yes, yes! Woo. You know why? Since 2011, you know why this is very shout loud for my, my son. Since 2011, we don't have that long vacation from home, son. Since 2011. That was how many years? Eight years? Wow. We have vacation, of course. Only for one week or less than one week. You know why? Because we want to come back here in home, son. To, have, to want to praise God, to worship, and to preach for you. Okay? <clears throat> I just want to give you my heart, okay? You know why this is very long way that we are having vacation? Because we want to stay here for your for the sake for the sake of church. We always think that we're gonna be preaching there. 
if we are going to have invitation in the Philippines. Who gonna do the discipleship when we are away? Who gonna do all this, the media thing, the worship thing, when we are away? What will happen? Because this is something that we have on our hearts all the time. That's why it takes us long to have a long vacation. But praise God, praise God, as we are following Jesus Christ, many are following Jesus Christ in this church as well. That's why leaders are rising up, volunteering to be leaders as well, volunteering to preach as well, volunteering to become leaders in worship team, volunteering to become leaders in media team, volunteering to discipling other people, volunteering to become a life group leader, and praise God. That's why we, Marco and I, said Amen so loudly because many are following Jesus Christ for the account of the Church of Jesus Christ. How many Church? How many Church? That's why I really thank you. I really thank you because many are rising and I know many more will rise up to become leaders. Because I know that we are teaching this about following Jesus Christ so that we can catch the principles why we are doing it. And I believe some of your life group leaders as well, they can have long vacation. Amen. <laughs> you shout loudly as well. Stole a vacation to his gladness, okay? <laughs> because I believe in life group, there will be more members rising up to be leaders as well. Helping life group leaders because they catch you know, they catch the principle of following Jesus Christ for the sake of the wife of Jesus Christ. If I just don't care, I could have vacation anytime. I'm capable of having vacation as well. But I choose to be here because God has put His heart for me, for His church. This is about God's love to His church. I'm in church. And I think for all of us, if we have this kind of heart, amazing. We can bring many people to Christ. We can serve God together. I know sometimes it's hard to serve God, but we together, we can serve together with, you know, for Christ. I mean, church, that's why following Jesus Christ is not about you or me. It's about the church. It's about Jesus Christ. If you think that you can serve God alone, then we can do it together. We cannot be followers of Jesus Christ without loving His church. It's very impossible for us to follow Jesus Christ without loving His wife. It's a package deal. It's very impossible for us church or it's very possible for us to follow Jesus Christ without involving our life to our brothers and sisters. Because salvation is a relationship. We have relationship with Christ first and then God is telling us, commanded us to love our brothers and sisters as well. Are we church? That's why children, you love one another, okay? Don't fight, huh? Hmm? Especially you, huh? Because God loves us. He wants his children to, to be loving. And we cannot be followers of Jesus Christ when, you know, when we just don't care. He wants us to be caring with one another. Are we church? Because this is how we follow Jesus Christ. But I want you to enjoy the journey with Christ. You can enjoy the journey with Sister Paula. I enjoy so much. You can enjoy your journey with Christ with Sister Annabeth. You can enjoy, you know, your journey with Brother Glenn, even though he's boring sometimes. You can enjoy, right? <laughs> it's, 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 we can enjoy together. When, when, we, when we read this Matthew, they are this great crowd following Jesus Christ. Probably while they are walking, they are singing together. They are, you know, having fun together. Together, when we are moving towards the victory in our life, when we are approaching Jesus Christ, we can have fun as well. We can enjoy our journey with Him, with one another, with as brothers and sisters. And we will continue to do that because God loves His church. He loves the welfare of His church. We can do this together. Amen, church? Amen. So point number two, this is the point number two. It's not about what we get, but what we give. It's not about what we get, but what we give. 
In Philippians 1, 22 says, If I am to live in my flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. You know, if you see the fruitful labor for Paul is about ministry. He wants to stay here to give. Okay? Paul wants to stay here to, to give to the church. So that the church will become fruitful. To bring something to the church so that they will become healthier. To bring something to the church so that they can move forward. They can, you know, they can, they can share the gospel throughout the nation. You know, following Jesus Christ is not about, you know, it's not about receiving only, but giving. It's not about bringing something. It, it is about bringing something, not about getting something. That's why we give. That's why we give sacrificial, you know, offerings to the Lord. I'm not only talking about finances also. Uh, finances, okay, church. I'm talking about everything. In John 3.16, God has modeled us this. Because this is our, the purpose of Jesus Christ. In John 3.16, I know you memorize this. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. That whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. God has given Jesus Christ for the world. And what was the result? Salvation to mankind. Blessing to every family, to every individual, because He gave. Great return came to God. When you give, there's always great return. And this is why, this is the purpose of following Jesus Christ, that we must give as well. Youth, I want to speak to you, youth. If you are studying, okay? Always learn to give. Give time in studying, okay? Don't try it always to receive allowances from your parents, okay? Learn to give time. Learn to give, you know, effort. Train yourself to study harder. Train yourself to, you know, to work harder for your assignments. Because if you give, there's a result. Imagine if you don't study and just receive, receive, receive. What will happen to your studies? You will fail. You will fail. Okay, church? In your job, okay, we all have jobs here. Some of you have jobs here. Many complain about their job and to their bosses. You know why? Because we think of all the time about receiving from our bosses. Why, why, my, why my colleague has this salary? Why don't have that kind of salary as well? I want to receive that salary. Sometimes we think of that, always receive, receive, receive. We always complain, complain about what we receive from our company. But what if you think to give something? Why don't we give or bring something in our life so that the company will be blessed? And then the company will bless us as well. Sometimes there's, you know, unfair things that has happening in company, but I want you to continue to do good because God knew everything about that. And God will bless you. Even the company will not bless you, God will bless you. But I want you to give. Just give something for that situation that you have in life. Every situation in your life, give something and it will bring back something extravagant. I'm in church, even in relationship. In relationship, if you all have this mentality to, to receive something from your spouses, your relationship will not work. If you think that your spouse can give you this money, can give you a car, can give you a house, can give you a rice, have, have nothing to give or something to bring up in your relationship, it will fail. I want you to have this kind of principle that in your relationship as couples, you must give something. You must bring something into your relationship so that in return, blessing will come. I mean, church, many relationships failed because they only think about what they can receive from their spouse. I mean, church, every kind of relationship, not only spouses, but also in friendship, in friendship, right? Give something, give smile. Give something. In every situation in your life, study in Norway, give something. I don't give something, that's why it's still hard to know, to study for me. <laughs> but I try to learn, to give something, extra effort to learn. Every situation in our life, even having a children, if you give everything, if you give extra effort, bringing something for that relationship of your children, it will blossom. 
it will prosper. Giving is very important because Jesus Christ modeled giving. That's why I'm not talking about finances here. Giving is everything. Every time, time, finances, of course, even, you know, some effort, studying, giving, you know, you can do it and you will see the result when you try to exert your effort to give something in every situation in your life. Don't try, you know, to take advantage of everything. Just to receive, receive, receive. Later on, it will fail. But I want you to have this principle to give. And even in church, if you want to grow spiritually, give. Give your time. Give effort. Give time to study. You know, the, maybe the example of the boy having this, you know, five loaves and two fishes. You know what happened? He gave. And how many people has been fed? 5,000 only men. In, if you include children and women, that would be around 8,000. Okay? This, you know the expert said. Imagine five loaves and two fishes, he fed 8,000. If you want to grow in your ministry, even the smallest thing that you have, it will multiply if you learn to give. This is the principle God is telling us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Only one man, God. He gave and he brought, up, brought us up so many people in heaven. A very small thing. I know God is a big thing, okay? Big God. But I'm telling you about something that we give, even how small it is, when you give it to the Lord, it will prosper. Amen, Amen church? Amen. That's why we must learn how to give. Give time. Give effort. Give effort. If you are late, maybe come earlier, five minutes before. Give time. Give effort, church. If you are in the ministry, learn more. Give something. Give extra effort to understand more. And you know, this young man, it, it came back also with 12 baskets of fish and loaves. More than what he gave. You know, when we desire to get something because we think of ourselves, then probably temporarily we receive something, but later on, in the long run, it will fail. So what can we give? As a Christian, what can we give? Is there something that you can give as Christian? I believe so. Okay? I believe we have something to give. In John 16, 7, it says here, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your own advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So this is what we have. It's the Holy Spirit. If we have the Holy Spirit, wow. Mighty things we can give to the church. Mighty things we can give to our relationship. Mighty things we can give to our education, to our job. Mighty things because we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. I mean church, and this is already enough for us to give. Even you know, how plenty your money is or how scarce your money is, we can give because the Holy Spirit is more than enough. I mean, church, you know, just bring something in your situation because God is love. We can bring love to other people as well. You know, me and my wife, okay, me and my wife has this uh, fight. It's normal for, for, uh, for a couple to have fight, but when we were young as a couple, we have this uh, very, you know, fight that Sometimes I think many things in my mind, okay? Because I, I was easily get angry. And I, I was so, so selfish. Thinking so many things against my wife. I always think about my rights as a husband. And I always think that mm -hmm, when I have arguments, I always think, Lord, my wife is, is not submissive. She's not submissive. She disrespected me in my anger, okay, in my heart. And I'm always thinking, I deserve to be served by my wife. I deserve to be cook, okay, to be, to do, to, to do everything that's just to serve me. And when we have this argument, I have this mind, mindset that if you, if you do this again, I will send you back in Philippines. You know, that, that's, how, yeah, that's how selfish I was. 
taking my wife, I will send you back. I'll just leave Marco here because I think what Marco was uh, my only son at that time. I, I, I have that kind of mind, mindset. I have this kind of attitude. I want, I want her to bring her back in the Philippines because I always think of about my rights, about my entitlement, about about me, me, me receiving something from from I me, from my wife. And then I ask the Lord because I'm I am also a Christian. I ask the Lord. I was so selfish, but I asked the Lord, Lord, help me what to do. I don't like this kind of feeling, being angry all the time to my wife. And God spoke to me. You know, I have given you, this is what God has told me. I have given you authority over to your family. Whatever happened to your family, it's your responsibility. Because I have given you authority. So even though he will, he will, the marriage will break, it's my responsibility because God has given me to take this responsibility to take care of my family. So I was convicted, so I just say sorry. You know, and then something that I received from God, something that I received from God, I want to bring up into my relationship with Amy. And many things that I received from God, I received love. Lord, I know that you are a God of love. Now since I received this love, I want to give it to you back. I want to give it to my me. I want to give it to my family. Even though there will be some hard arguments, I will continue to love her. I will not think of negative things against him, against her, or try to push her away in my life, but try you know, to bring something in our relationship, to give something in our relationship so that it will prosper and it will grow. And when I started to do that, wow, it's amazing our relationship grow. I am more in love with Amy. Every day is a honeymoon. <laughs> we have, we are, you know, we continue dating together. That's why, you know, when you're married, speak to your wife or husband, schedule your dates, okay? To tell you, this is the fact, we haven't, you know, we haven't had any arguments Every week before, we have arguments every week. We fight every week. Okay, sometimes in a week we have two arguments and fight. But now, I think for one year, we only have one or two arguments. And sometimes we tease one another. Han, when was the last time we fight? Can we fight now? <laughs> because we forget already when was the last time we fight. You know why? Because we bring something into our this is the principle of giving. Following Jesus Christ is giving something. I'm telling you this because I'm concerned about you. When Paul is concerned about his church, about the welfare of the church, telling every experiences that he has, I'm telling you also because this is true. When you give something in every relationship that you have, it will prosper. Try extra effort for your family, for your children, for your career, everything for you. In your studies, try to give small extra effort and it will prosper. I mean, church, can we do that, church? And that's why I want you to give love to everybody else. Can you say to the person beside you, I love you? Oh, don't do that, okay? Just love, okay? Love us, brothers and sisters, okay? Can we all have this uh, song? I know some of you are probably, I believe that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Can we all bow down our heads as we? As we are, you know, as we are, you know, seeking the presence of God, I want you to just meditate what we have just shared, the meditation about who Jesus Christ is. I want you to just bow down your heads and be with God. And as we sing this song, I want you to be reminded for every love that you receive from God, for every things that you have received from God. I know if I'm going to tell you to remind all of this, I believe you got something to give. You got something to give. You got something to bring in every situation in your life. If you see, if you receive love from God, bring love. If you receive patience from God, bring patience into your relationship, in every relationship in every situation in your life. If you receive gentleness, peace, and joy, 
bring it into that situation in your life.
to Jesus Christ with all your heart, soul, and mind. Can you raise your hand? And I want to pray for you. While everyone eyes are closed, I want you to raise your hand if you want to be prayed for. If you want, amen, church, if you want to connect and to make your life to Jesus Christ even more. Yes, sister, I submit. I will pray for you. And another area of your life, if you want something that sometimes it's hard for you to give in your life, hindering you that your relationship or every area of your life, the result is not moving at all. There's no growing at all. But right now, maybe God is speaking to you. What if you bring something into your, that relationship? What if you give something in that relationship? And right now, if there's something holding up into your life, can you raise your hand and I want to pray for you as well. Amen. Amen. I can see, I see your hands and I pray for you. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these hands raised, Father God. Lord, as they raised their hands, they want to follow Jesus Christ because they understood that it's not about me, it's not about them, it's about Jesus Christ, about your church. Lord, I pray to release this blessing upon the Lord God, to release power to follow Jesus Christ. Release this power right now that comes from the Holy Spirit. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let them walk in the journey to Jesus Christ. Give them this heart, Father God, spirit heart with fire, Father God, following Jesus Christ. And those brothers and sisters that who are willing to give for relation for their relationship or for every situation in their life, Lord, help them not to hold back to give. If this channel of pipes are clogged, Lord God, cleanse it, remove every clog so that this river of living water will flow over their life and through their life. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, every hindrances, why they cannot give, Lord, I break right now this chain over to their life and let this chain be removed in the mighty name of Jesus and let this power to give, Lord God, in their life, in their situation of their life, will give and will overflow their life. And I pray that once they give, Lord God, I believe in my heart that blessing will come to their life. Relationship will be stored. Healings will come in their life. Even prosperity, O Lord God, in their death will be promoted, Father God. We pray for everything, O Lord God, that they need, Lord God, because you have, Lord God, removed, Lord God, every heart that don't want to give, Lord God. Because you give freely, we are going to give freely as well, Lord God. You have molded us first, and we will continue to do it, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless you all.